years ago, seven day delivery was something normal and that was expectation. Now 24 hours is something which customers demand. We wanted to go further. Customers don't know how we do it, but we are doing it. We are simplifying every process for them. Staram się z zespołem pracować tak, aby też poczuli to natchnienie, że uczestniczą w czymś niezwykłym. If you want to achieve something which is unachievable, you cannot know. You, you don't know that it's not achievable. You are too stupid to know that. And you are so brave to do it. This is CRNet TV. My name is Hendrik Deckers. I'm here today in Gdansk with Konrad Jezierski, who is the head of retail at Ebovie, uh, which is the largest uh, e-commerce shoe retailer of, uh, of Poland and who is active in 15 countries all around Europe. Welcome, uh, Konrad. Konrad uh, studied marketing and management in Poland uh, and also studied business and administration at the university in Sweden. He has more than 10 years of experience in fashion and retail and is now responsible for omnichannel and retail in this uh, very interesting and uh, dynamic uh, e-commerce uh, business here in uh, Poland. So, um, Konrad, could you tell us a little bit about your uh, digital storefront program that you have developed in this company? Uh, when I started with, with Tio Bouvier, it was a pure e-commerce company. Mm -hmm. So. We can say, as you mentioned, it's the largest e-commerce company, but now we can say it's one of the, um, the first leader in pure omni-channel. Okay. Uh, when I joined the company, uh, we were operating on 10, 11 markets, really successful. Okay. Uh, but we started to think how to reach to a, to a wider audience, to, to grow faster than the other e-commerce uh, e um, competitors. So it started purely online? Yes, the company has a background more than 10 years on pure online, as a pure online retailer. Okay, great. So uh, it was an idea how to grow faster, how to reach to the wider audience. Yeah. As you know, all over the world, e-commerce e has only about maximum 20% of, of reach of re the market. Correct. And you are active in 15 European countries. Yes. Spain, Italy, Hungary, Greece, almost like in every major uh, country in Europe, uh, you're active, but on the local brands. So 15 different brands in 15 different countries. Correct. All only on, uh, in e-commerce. But online e-commerce was only like 20% of the market and you wanted more. It's, it's global tendency that e-commerce is growing really rapidly, but still a brick and mortar stores or the retail, brick and mortar retail is about 80-85% okay. of the income. Yeah. So we wanted to reach out to those customers who somehow they, don't, they still prefer the traditional uh, model of purchasing, making a purchases and you know. So we try to figure it out how to reach to them, but still keep our uh, core identity, plus also our vision, mission and, and the goal to be a customer centric and not over promised, but whatever we, we, we promised, we are delivering it. So your company took the other way than traditional companies who are like brick and mortar stores, who put a, an e-commerce e web shop in front of it. Absolutely. And you come from the online, the e-commerce, and now you're putting in place real shops. Yes, that's right, but okay. in absolutely different way. Okay. So we are not competing with traditional retailers. We don't want it to be the same. We don't want it to have a stores and I don't know our logo above the entrance. First, we try to understand our customers and understand the potential customers why they are not buying online. Okay. The the first reason, the most especially in in the in the shoe uh, uh, business, is that you are not buying online because you cannot try it. Uh, earlier okay. before the purchase yep. so that was the main main uh, uh, reason for for the the, the the test group that we we asked the main questions regarding why why not eobuvia why not e-commerce why not buying online? why are you not buying online why are you not spending your money with us correct that was the question correct and what did i say because i cannot try earlier the shoes i don't know if they will fit me 
I don't know if the color looks the same. There are, were many factors, but those are most of the customers said that this is the main factor. Okay. So the idea was okay. Let's give a, the, those offline customers. Let's give them uh, unlimited choice, like it's in Iobuvie, mm -hmm. fast uh, purchase, everything which is very um, what what is what is the success factor of Iobuvie in e-commerce. Take that and put it to brick and mortar. Plus, what is the best from brick and mortar? That I have product on place. I can try it. I can see it. I can experience test it, it and experience it. Yeah. Plus, I can always ask for a service. Someone can always advise. Advise. Yeah. So there is. So you wanted the best of both worlds. That was Correct. the purpose. That was where the start we of the uh, can combine the unlimited choice that you have online Correct. and the ease of use of, of purchasing with the traditional service and experience and, and try before you buy of, of uh, a traditional store. Correct. So how did you uh, fix that uh, challenge? We started to create a normal store, normal retail space where there was a, a, a huge shop front with a tiny stock room when we tried it to to, to work with the shoes, with the deliveries, with the visual merchandising. We couldn't uh -huh. because of the choice which Iobuvie has. More than 500 brands, so it's more than 50,000 different styles of shoes. 50,000 different shoes that I can order with your company? Yes, different wow. styles of shoes. So what we started to do is how to display those shoes without showing them uh, and how to deliver them in the normal way that customer, when when it is in store, can, can grab it, touch it, try it. Mm -hmm. So we decide to to change the the balance between the stockroom and bet between the sto storefront. Okay. So we made a tiny storefront, about 25, 30 percent of the store, mm -hmm. of the of the of the surface is only a storefront. Yeah, everything back is a, a warehouse. We can even say a logistics uh, center. Uh -huh. I will I will explain later why. Uh, to stock a massive amount of shoes. So compared to the normal um, mono brand, mm -hmm. we have in one store about 50 mono brand stores. Okay. Show me shopping center where you have 50 different uh, brands styles. Yep. 50 different brands mono stores where you can. Uh, buy a shoes. So the Nikes, the Adidas, and so on and so on. So yeah, 10, 15, that's all. So in our store, you have more than 50 uh, the options, more than from from more than 50 uh, brands. Okay. Uh, 50 mono brands. Yeah. Uh, so many styles. So we uh, let's say um, pick an option where okay, unlimited choice. Bam, done. Okay. Then how to uh, show those, uh, those uh, shoes, those products to the customers. Mm -hmm. So we decide if we are pure uh, e-commerce, let's uh, based on that. So let's give a customers the same feeling, the same experience as buying at home yep. in front of the computer or in front of the uh, smartphone. So we just uh, adjust our web page create a mo a, an application, in-store application, mm -hmm. which was very similar to our web page, mm -hmm. and gave that as a search finder with all those So the interface filters. in the shop for the people is digital? Everything is digital. Okay. We even remove the physical products. So there is no shelves, there is no physical products. In the shop, okay, there's only displays? Yes, and screens. Only screens? Correct. On the screens so and say, I want an Adidas size this, this color, this type, and then, and then what happens? So, mm, a step back. When you are coming to a normal store, uh, you are asking a, a service. I, I would like to buy, you know, brown shoes yeah. that that size. Please show me. Yeah. I don't know, dark color or. Mm -hmm. Then probably or you see uh, two or three models on the on the shelves but you don't know what is behind. Probably they have another few models which they have only one size, so they don't show it, don't display it, but they still have it. So sales assistants need to be aware of the stock. Yeah. And we know that they will never show you the maximum options because 
We are only humans, yes. Yeah, so it's the, like the, otherwise you have the, 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 the stress of choice. You only want to give these are the two or three, pick one of these three, because that closed, closed the deal there. We use the same filtering as on the web page. You can decide either you wanted to filtering only f your size, type of shoe, color, mm -hmm. and you are not disappointed because on the, on the screen you see exactly the shoes which we have in our offer, and yeah. you can try them now here in the, in the, in the store. Yeah. Also, we are using digital screens, so not only tablets for a choice, but a digital screens all over the store, mm -hmm. what we are showing our offer, showing promotions, showing the uh, best sellers, so everything is, is uh, connected and we are gathering data to show the proper shoes in the proper places in the proper time. So this pure digital storefront is quite a unique concept. It is. Okay. And I can imagine that from different angles, it's also quite uh, a challenge to, to, to organize that. You have logistics, you have the marketing, you have IT, there's, there's digital, so there's many, many challenges that you need to uh, address before you can make that into a success. And it's omni-channel because the same stock which we have all over the place in stores, we, we are calling them a, a, a small hubs. Yeah. Our customer in Spain, he don't know where is the, the, the product, which, for example, he's ordering via our web page. Mm -hmm. We need to deliver it on the same time exactly as we are delivering from the, our warehouse in, the, in Zielona Gura, which company is based. Mm -hmm. So logistic is crucial, yeah. but also all the digital and information that was really important because everything is online, everything is live. There is no option for being for, to have an error to show the product which was already bought. Yep. And as you mentioned, we are, we are operating on so many countries mm -hmm. that it needs to be live all the time, yep. very fast. But digital is in the DNA of your company. Yes. You've been uh, a digital company from the start. Correct. Yeah. But still, this was an extra challenge because you had to link the, 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 the storefront, the web front, the web interface, also with the, uh, with the specific stores that you were developing there. To specific location, to yeah. specific store, to specific customer, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, also, prepare a proper offer which is on place. Yeah. What we also commit is that if you are in store and you are ordering a shoe for trying, mm -hmm. We will deliver it to you, to your place where you are sitting in front of the tablet, uh, in less than three minutes. Okay. It's our commitment. If we, if we won't do that, mm -hmm. we are giving you a discount. Okay, cool. <laughs> so this is our commitment to our customers. You don't need to see the product, you will have them in three minutes. Time. Because people are so spoiled. The expectations of the customer for a very quick uh, experience is they are immense, right? Yes, that's why we made this uh, unique concept because you don't need to be in a store to reserve to try those shoes. You can use our uh, mobile app, you can use our web page, mm -hmm. you can uh, reserve the shoes which you would like to yeah. try on. Due to the more stores and those uh, logistic centers, hubs, we are able to deliver it to you, your order, in less than three hours. Okay. So you can sit on your lunch and you will have, in three hours, shoes. We will deliver it to your office, to your home. So for example, if you need a new shoes for the evening, you can order it even at four o'clock and you will still have it. At seven. Correct, wow. before seven. Okay. So expectations, customers' expectations are rising, growing. Few years ago, seven day delivery was something normal and that was expectations. Yeah. Now 24 hours is something which customers demand. Yeah. We wanted to go <laughs> further. We wanted to... So where is this going to end? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there will be us, you know, we, we're trying to do our best. We're trying to put a customer in the, in the center. We're trying to listen to the customers and we are developing this concept. Omnichannel, which we create uh, one and a half year ago, is different today than it was when we opened the first store because it's a, something that you need to always improve. Yeah, I can imagine. How many of these stores do you have uh, operating uh, today? 12. 
12. In one year time, we open uh, 12 stores mm -hmm. and we are rapidly opening more. Okay. So till end of the year, we are planning to have more than 20. Okay, and what are the results? I mean, what's the, uh, are you on, on target? Are you within the expectations of, uh, of, of uh, revenue and profit that you make from this? Let's say we open one store, the first store in um, February 2018. Mm -hmm. We are now in 2019, in the middle of the year, and we have 12 stores and plan it to open in the end of the year more than 20 yeah. in total. So yes, it's very successful. Traditional customer who never tried to buy online or which they never have an occasion to, to visit web page or to buy in your bouvier. Now we have a, a contact with them. We are recruiting, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, customers we, we, we never, which we never yeah. targeted them via SEO, SAM and all other uh, marketing tools. And if we talk numbers, I mean, what you can disclose or uh, I don't know, but um, what is the target? Is that the target that you would like get the same revenue from, uh, from the stores and from online? It will be difficult because online we are building for more than 10 years, plus we are on 15 markets. Now we are talking about one market with the stores, but now, as for today, um, turnover from the stores, from this omnichannel, uh, um, omnichannel store, storefront, is more than, is between 5 and 7% of the, of the e-commerce uh, total, but comparing only Poland is more than 10%, in between 10 and 15. And did you see also an, an effect on the online business? Because I can imagine that it has a, a synergy effect as well. It is. It's difficult to measure because, you know, yeah. we, we gave an option to, to our new customers or to existing customer, mm -hmm. customers, their new way of buying, yes? The model which, which we called ROPO, reserved, uh, Research Online Purchase Offline, mm -hmm. we gave that opportunity. We Research uh, online, online purchase pur offline. Purchase offline. Ropo. Okay. Correct. We, but in a little bit different way. You know, all the brick and mortar companies which have online stores now, e-commerce platforms, uh, you are able to buy, purchase, or uh, and uh, order via click and collect. Yeah. So they treat stores as a click and collect points. Mm -hmm. We treat them more as a showrooms where you are able to come. The products will wait on you. You can try them, they are reserved for you, you can try them and then decide either pay for them or not. So we are not blocking your money, we are not blocking your uh, uh, cash on your credit card. You can order what, whatever amount of shoes you want, you're just coming, trying and say that, that, that I want, I'm paying, I'm leaving. So this program started like two years ago, the development of this omni-channel. How do you organize uh, a new strategy like it that? It was difficult because uh, we set up a, a, let's say, irrational goal. We <laughs> said we will do it in, a, in less than half year. Mm -hmm. It took a little bit longer, but it was from, from the perspective, from the idea mm -hmm. to the, the opening of the, of the absolutely new concept, yeah. it was about eight to ten months. Mm -hmm. okay. So usually, Companies are doing researches or uh, analysis and all of that for more than that to, to, to make a decision. Uh, we knew it will be successful. We knew what is the, our goal. We, we listen to our customers, so we know them. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was very difficult in, in organization, which were, were, was pure online, yeah. to add this, uh, let's say, another brick of the competences, yes. And so how do you look at the IT, the digital team that uh, delivered this? Because there was a, they, they did an important part of the delivery as well, of course. And you have logistics and the show and, and yeah, the stores and so on. But digital is an important part of that. How do you look at this collaboration? What is important uh, in a successful collaboration between business and, and IT? To be honest, I, the first, you know, the, 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 the starting point was quite tough because it was more like we have an idea, guys, but you need to deliver it. Okay. But it was a, a partnership relation when we started to dig to go, go through all the processes to create the processes. So without that IT background, without the, the, the IT, this idea wouldn't be able to, to, to exist. To, to, um, but when you talk about creating a partnership, how do you do that? I mean, because... Lots of hours of meetings, uh -huh. lots of uh, 
um, workshops, uh, different ideas, tests. So we, we ha it was challenging time, really challenging time, especially for, for IT team. And because IT typically is not, I mean, you need to have some patience. Business want to go fast, fast, fast. Yes. And IT, they need some time to come up with, to deliver. Proper solution, yep. which is safe, which is tested, which yep. is, so of course, the, the idea was to, you know, open a, a stable business. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we are pure uh, online. So every, every display point, every yep. tablet, every skin is online 24 hours a day. So we are not able to sell without the infrastructure, IT infrastructure. So uh, it needs to be stable. It needs to support, cover the, 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 the business needs. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. So your um, colleague Jaroslav Hoffman is the CIO of, uh, of EO Bouvier. In your organization, how do you see his role? What is the strength of, of the IT team and IT leadership in your organization? What makes them special? Our team, IT team, is very flexible. So they, they, are, they were open for a new ideas and they are very crea creative. Mm -hmm. We bring the idea. It was only, you know, like, a, let's do this. We never gave the tools. It was like more, okay, so now we expect a tools or the way how to, mm -hmm. how to deliver the idea. But also, I can imagine it's really a team play. It's not something that you can just throw over the wall to IT and then wait and see what happens and what comes back. It is also people from the business that need to sit together with IT on a daily basis almost. We create new service. So it was, of course, for example, we say, OK, we wanted to deliver something in two hours. We made the tests, we made, you know, uh, all of the, the workshop. We said, OK, now with the current um, environment or uh, current, let's say, ingredients which we have to, how to combine them, we are not able to, to do that. So it was like a little bit, maybe not a little bit, but yeah. a play uh, with, with all the department from the organization when IT uh, made a crucial role because it was business idea, but it need to be uh, delivered from, not only from IT, but from logistic, from um, operational department, at the end covering the idea or the business, it needs to be profitable. So let's talk a little bit because, and, and in a moment we'll, uh, we'll bring on Jaroslav. Um, let's talk a little bit uh, about you as a person, as a business leader. Um, what is it that drives you? Because obviously to do a challenge and to do a project like this, you need a certain uh, personality. So how, what is it that makes you happy in the morning or in the evening? What, what is it that really drives you in doing this? What I'm doing. So I love my work. Mm -hmm. I, I never feel that I'm but what, doing what this. What is it that you love? When are you happy in your work? When I'm able to deliver, to create uh, something unique, something innovative, yeah. which Sometimes it's not a, a, a game changer, but something which improve the way or speed up some processes that at the end, you know, as a Yobuvi, I think we are something, some like, uh, I think about the company, like we are a little bit like wizards. We make a magic. Mm -hmm. The customer don't know how we do it, but we are doing it. We are simplifying every process for them. When you're buying, it needs to be a fun. It needs to be, you don't think about, okay, Am I, how I will pay it? Do I need to pay like that? Do I need to have a special account? No, we are simplifying. We do it for you. It's absolutely simple. So if, if I understand it correctly, the focus of your company and your organization is really about customer satisfaction. Yes. That's the it number is. one value I can Always. imagine. Yeah. Yes. And it drives you to be creative. And it's an, uh, what I understand, it's an ongoing improvement process, of all of the course. different processes, the sales Where? and the logistics and IT. Wherever we stop. are able to be, to, to be better. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. Now I think we are even more brave because we already made something which we see is very successful. Mm -hmm. So it gives us uh, also, as I mentioned, we are more brave to do another very uh, demanding, very innovative processes, things. Because I can imagine that it's, it's a pretty tough market that you're in. I mean, there's, there's 
big big retailers not not to uh, mention the german company that starts with a z but i mean they're they're really really big i can imagine that they're bigger than your organization maybe of course and so to challenge them and to uh, to beat them you have to be uh, agile and creative and, and and be better than them right yes but it's also because we have a great team mm -hmm. on the directors or CIOs or the board members, we are really a, a team which which uh, want to achieve a goals. And as you mentioned, we are focused on the customer. Yeah. Either it's a improvement in logistic, in some services, uh, create a new new service or the new idea. We are just you know focusing on that, and we are trying to achieve. You know, someone told me uh, a few years ago that. Uh, you know, if you wanted to be creative, into if you want to achieve something which is unachievable, you cannot know. You you don't know that it's not achievable. Mm -hmm. You are too stupid to know that, and you are so brave to doing that. Yeah. So I think this is something positive. We don't know. You know, a few years ago, you think that if my CEO, if the president, was thinking that the German company with Z in the name, <laughs> wow, it's so big. Are we able to challenge them? No. We knew that we are able to challenge, to beat yeah. them. We even didn't look on them because we tried to do something better, way better. Your company is a Polish company. Uh, is there anything special about Poland, about your organization that made this success possible? We grow as a, a, from a small company based in Zielona Góra, mm -hmm. which is on the uh, southwest uh, of Poland. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are now international, we are operating on so many markets, but we still keep this factor. So we, ha we are a family company, mm -hmm. uh, we are still thinking as a, as a small company because we have very flat structure okay. and because of that we are able to make our decisions very fast. And so that allows for creativity and there's an engagement of the CEO and the family in the business and so they allow you to explore and to innovate. Yes, but not only the family, not only the CEO, but everyone are involved. They treat it as their own company and wanted to 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 deliver 150, 200 percent. Okay. Yeah, Polish are known to be hard workers, right? Correct. Okay. So let's talk about the, um, the one of the Polish factors uh, as well. Uh, you mentioned are the the local partners that you work with. Talk about that a bit. Correct. We. We started a few years ago, we weren't so successful, we weren't so, so, so big company. We started with Polish local companies, which we are working with them now. Mm -hmm. So it's partner relationships. We are, have very, very close relations. We are able to operate fast. And grow and together. Grow together. And we are not using off-the-shelf solutions. Mm -hmm. It's more customized solutions. Mm -hmm. So that's why we, we are successful because we can make those de decisions and work very fast together. Yeah. Let's talk about eSizeMe, which is a follow-up uh, uh, program on the digital storefront. Talk about that. Yes. So, as I mentioned, uh, we create the omnichannel storefronts from, for, for the first reason is that to try the shoes on because mm -hmm. people don't know which size is, uh, yeah. which size order. Yeah. So we gave this opportunity. But still we wanted to go further and the idea was, okay, how am I able to provide you the information about the proper size in each different models, mm -hmm. in the, each different brands? Yeah. There is a huge vi variety between the same size in one company and the other. Yeah. Sometimes it's more than three sizes. Wow. Yes. Okay. W we see that people who are buying online, they're buying their brands, which they know, which they are... Uh, which they are pretty sure which size suits them, fits them. Yeah, size is a big thing then. Correct. Yeah. So we wanted to solve that problem. And we create a service which we are able to, which we are making a 3D scan of your fits. Mm -hmm. We have 3D scans uh, of each model of the shoe which we have in an offer. Mm -hmm. And we are able to combine them and to uh, recommend you the proper size or the proper models suits to you. Okay, and does it work? It is. <laughs> because typically, I mean, people tend to buy or to order three sizes, try them on and then send two sizes back. 
Correct. And that is an, a huge logistic uh, cost and, and overhead, not good for the environment and so on and so on. So is this going to solve this problem? It is going to solve this problem, but it also gave uh, each customer an option to buy from the uh, brands which never take into consideration because what is my size? Yeah. I never tried on. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the, the option with the refunds, it's a huge uh, e-commerce problem. Not every uh, e-commerce player has uh, wanted to reduce uh, that, uh, that amount. We also, so that was uh, one of the idea. But what we achieved making that is that we see more engagement from our customers. Okay. Conversion rate is much higher. Uh, average order value is much higher. So we see only a benefits from this, from this project. Are there any other things that you wanted to share on your company, about your organization, about your collaboration with IT uh, in, in, uh, in this conversation? I would like to, to, to again tell you that Omnichannel is an ongoing process, so we are still trying to, to achieve goals to solve the customer's problems. Now, for example, a few, few weeks ago, we uh, added a, a service for our customers that we are able to produce personalized insole. And insole is the, the thing that you put inside your shoe to, to make the fit complete? Uh, to make a, a shoe more comfortable, fits better and all of that. So, so we are only one company in Europe which is able to create an uh, insole based on your scan of your feet, but okay. also dedicated to the model of the shoe which you choose. So there is no cutting, fitting, trying and all of that. Thank you very much for this conversation. It was uh, uh, very enlightening, very inspirational as well. And so we're going to continue and uh, uh, talk a little bit with your uh, colleague uh, Jaroslav Hofmann and talk a bit about how he has built the IT team and, uh, and, and how he leads them uh, to achieve uh, the success together with, uh, with the business teams in, uh, in your organization. Thank you very much, Conrad. Thank you. So in the second part of this uh, conversation, uh, we're going to talk to uh, Jarek Hofmann, uh, who is the CIO of EO Bouvier. And Jarek has a degree in computer science from a university here in, uh, in Poland. He started his career as an IT director at uh, Max Electronic and at uh, Sign Signity uh, Group. And since 2013, he is the CIO of uh, this leading e-commerce shoe company. So uh, welcome to this conversation, uh, Jarek. So the first thing I would like to know, we've spoken to your colleague uh, from the business side is, he gave you quite a challenge uh, to, uh, to do this digital storefront uh, project. So how did, you, how did you handle this? Because how do you handle complexity and how do you organize teams um, to, to deliver the high demands that come from business? Nowa koncepcja biznesu przyniosła przede wszystkim wyzwania dla IT. Wymagało to zmiany organizacji IT dotychczasowej, która była skoncentrowana na biznes e-commerce'owy, czyli sklepy online. Mhm. Wymagało to od nas zbudowania struktur, zbudowania kompetencji do obsłużenia no, tak wy wy wymagających projektów, jakie pojawiły się w firmie. Mhm. Budowa e, wyjścia z online'u do offline'u, można powiedzieć, w nowym wymiarze, w koncepcie, gdzie e, re, e, koncept retailowy jest e, bardzo e, mocno technologiczny, e, jest mnóstwo technologii w wyniesionych lokalizacjach, wymaga zapewnienia obok technologii e, i rozwiązań e, systemowych, które pracują w tych lokalizacjach, no, wysokiej dostępności. To były duże wyzwania. Wspólnie z moim teamem zaprojektowaliśmy rozwiązania, które no, spełniają do dzisiaj swoją rolę. No i wypracowały, tak to wygląda, sukces no, tego konceptu i rozwijamy to dalej. Na dzień dzisiejszy team jest skoncentrowany na obsługę zarówno biznesu online, jak i biznesu offline'owego. So what I wanted to know is, 
Um, how is IT organized in, uh, in, in your company and how do you make sure that you work closely together with the business? Um, kompetencje IT e, w spółce, jaką jest e, obuwie, mm -hmm. e, są zorientowane w różnych działach biznesowych firmy. Moją rolą jest e, scalenie tego, skonsolidowanie i sprawne zarządzenie. E, mamy dział Basis IT, którym zarządzam bezpośrednio. Jest dział rozwijający aplikacje e-commerce, mm -hmm. integrację e-commerce. Jest dział, który zarządza aplikacjami systemowymi, w tym w szczególną rolę pełniącą w retailu, aplikacją posową i instorową. Let's talk about you as a manager. How is it that you build teams and how do you make sure that your teams are successful? What is your management style? Buduję e, tak zwany miksie, czyli dobieram do, do teamu osoby o kompetencjach seniorskich i również stawiam na rozwój talentów, i, czyli kompetencje juniorskie. Z reguły, jeżeli mówimy o kompetencjach juniorskich, są to studenci ostatnich lat studiów informatycznych, o profilu informatycznym. Osoby o profilu seniorskim posiadają wiedzę, kompetencje. Staram się tak aktywować mój team, moich pracowników, aby nastąpiła wymiana wiedzy, transfer tej wiedzy do osób, które budują swoje doświadczenie. Staram się, by ten team pracował wspólnie nad projektami, żeby nie było podziału w środku na starszych, młodszych. And how many people do you have in IT? Zespół IT nie jest e, zbyt liczebny. E, wykorzystujemy potencjał naszych partnerów zewnętrznych. Dobieramy e, w drodze no, szczegółowych analiz e, i, i rozmów partnerów, którzy wspomagają nam na rozwijać nasz biznes. Core kompetencje utrzymujemy, e, utrzymujemy wewnętrznie e, i e, ten zespół w zasadzie w zakresie e, takiego ściśle IT e, basisowego, aplikacyjnego i e-commerce'owego liczy na dzisiaj kilkadziesiąt osób. You have about 40 people in your direct team and about more than 100 people that work for you uh, with your partners and, and outsourced and so on. So what is it that your team uh, wants to follow you? What makes you a good leader? Staram się pokazać, że przez ciężką pracę y, można do czegoś dojść, można realizować i spełniać się y, w pracy zawodowej, y, podejmując trudnych wyzwań, y, trudnych projektów innowacyjnych. Y, mnie osobiście inspirują y, wyzwania zawodowe, y, jest to moją pasją i staram się to przenieść do zespołu, y, pokazać, że można z tym, e, można godzić przede wszystkim e, życie zawodowe z życiem prywatnym. Można realizować przez to e, z, e, siebie osobiście. Staram się e, z zespołem pracować tak, aby e, też poczuli to natchnienie, e, że uczestniczą w czymś niezwykłym. Good. Let's talk about your MBTI profile that we're using as a common thread in these conversations that we have with digital leaders. Uh, around the world. Your MBTI profile is ESTG uh, and ESTGs are representatives of tradition and order. They utilize their understanding of what is right and wrong, is socially acceptable and they would like to bring families and communities together. They embrace the values of honesty, dedication and dignity and uh, people with this personality type are valued for their clear advice and guidance and they happily lead the way on difficult parts. How does that resonate with you? Tak, wykonawcy angażują się w niezwykle trudne projekty. I takim projektem i jest e, obecność w EOBUWie moja i zaangażowanie w rozwój tej organizacji i rozwój tego biznesu. Oczywiście IT niesie wymagania na styku z biznesem, które nie nie pozwalają na, w niektórych miejscach nie pozwalają na kompromisy i do tego myślę, że cechy mojej osobowości 
no, wypełniają te potrzeby jednoczesnego podążania za trendem, za innowacją, za wymaganiami, które niesie biznes i realizacji tego w porządku, ustrukturyzowaniu, w jasno określonym harmonogramie, planie, aby dowieść to, co trzeba, co trzeba dowieść. With your personality, working in a very innovative, changing e-commerce company could be a challenge because uh, working with an unconventional situation with a lot of change and so on is not necessarily uh, an easy thing for your personality. So how do you deal with that? Przede wszystkim jestem osobą otwartą na zmianę. Zmiana jest, w, rozumiem, że zmiana jest wymagana w, przy innowacjach, które, które jakby wymagają dynamicznego podejścia do realizacji celów. Kto pierwszy, to lepszy. W związku z tym staram się negocjować z biznesem terminy, aby były to racjonalne i żeby szło w zgodzie z no, wymaganiami, jakie niesie IT, czyli z dostępnością, z bezpieczeństwem, z no, określoną, określonym porządkiem realizacji projektów. Jest to dialog, nie jest to monolog z mojej strony. Mam takich partnerów jak Konrad, którzy potrafią ze mną usiąść do stołu i ustalić jeden optymalny plan, który no, zapracuje na sukces danego projektu. So I can imagine that with Conrad and from the business end and, and, and his personality and your personality together, it's a very strong team. Okay, so let's talk about what makes you happy. In your personal life and in your professional life, when do you really feel very good? W życiu zawodowym e, mam okazję spełniania się, uczestniczenia w czymś niezwykłym, w niezwykłych projektach, mm -hmm. projektach innowacyjnych, e, Jestem osobą, która lubi ciężko pracować, w związku z tym mój czas, dzień, czas, czas który spędzam w pracy no jest w pełni wykorzystany na realizację projektów. Pozwala mi to spełniać się zawodowo, jest to zgodne z moimi pasjami i na koniec dnia, wiedząc, że Efektem mojej pracy jest coś, co produkt, który no, trafi do konsumentów, który pozwoli im sprawniej realizować swoje marzenia, swoje zakupy, no, jest moją satysfakcją osobistą. So, Jarek, you have three children, two daughters and a son. Uh, what are the values that you want your children to take over from you? Nie narzucam dzieciom, e, swoim dzieciom e, kierunków rozwoju e, ich osobistego. E, pozwalam im rozwijać się tam, gdzie leżą ich pasje. E, najstarsza córka e, jest artystką, można powiedzieć, i pasjonuje się fotografią, syn sportem. E, rozwija się też w ścisłych dziedzinach nauki, a najmłodsza córka jeszcze się kształtuje. To, na co stawiam, to na wykształcenie swoich dzieci. Staram się im pokazać, że ciężka praca na etapie edukacji zaprocentuje w przyszłości, że tą wiedzę, którą zdobędą w szkole, będą mogli wykorzystać w swoim życiu zawodowym. W... Pozwalam na zorientowanie się co do e, kierunków kształcenia, zajęć dodatkowych. Dzieci wiedzą że, e, i widzą, że ciężko pracuje. E, normy, które e, ja cenię, staram się, żeby e, również, e, również stały się normami e, w mojej rodzinie, mhm. e, czyli uczciwość, e, Ciężka praca, bo to przynosi efekty i pozwala się spełniać również w życiu prywatnym, spełniać swoje pasje, swoje hobby. To end this very interesting conversation, I would like to know from you, Jarek, what would you advise people that are 10 years younger 
and then have the aspiration to become a digital leader in the future, to become a CIO. What would your advice for them be? Przede wszystkim odwaga. Nie obawiać się wyzwań, jakie przynosi dzisiejszy świat biznesu. Poznawanie nowych technologii, odkrywanie nowych, nowych możliwości, jakie, niesie, jakie niosą technologie IT i dostarczanie biznesowi rozwiązań, które są odpowiedzią na ich oczekiwania, możliwie precyzyjne. With this, Jarek, I would like to thank you for this conversation. I think it gives uh, a very nice overview both of um, the business parts of the business and how IT uh, works very close together in your organization as a driving force of innovation and how you as a leader are very well positioned to make sure that everything is well organized and, and delivered on time and, and that you can innovate in this company where the customer really is f comes first, where customer experience is the number one value. Thank you very much, uh, Jarek. Thank you.